everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have a very special interview with one of our hall stars. We are excited to be talking to with Rukia Bernard and I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Rukia, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Anytime. Glad to be here. Yeah. So you have done so many projects for Hallmark and other projects, but what we like to do is to ask our guests to introduce yourself and tell us what inspired you to become an actor? Well, okay. Uh, my name is Rukia Bernard. And what inspired me to become an actor is, I think it had to do with the fun factor and making people laugh and feel stuff. It's uh-huh. kind of always been in me. Did you start when you acting when you were little or, or how did you kind of get into it? Yeah, not professionally. I've done school plays and all that throughout my life, but uh, it wasn't until I went to college that I went to theater school and I did it kind of by the numbers after graduating from high school, went to theater school at a university Mm -hmm. in Toronto and then graduated and got an agent and started acting. Yeah. And so what shows were you in high school? I always like to ask that. (laughs) Oh gosh. So many, like even self-written plays, you know how the way how your teacher tells you, okay, I want you to do a show about blah, blah, blah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You you and your friends make up some stuff. Right. But I do remember one, uh, what was called arrivals and departures by a Canadian playwright that is now slipping my mind. And that was cool because it was entered, we entered into like a Kiwanis festival and we got, and we got third place. So that was pretty cool. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's cool did you do musicals never really musicals I'm not much of a singer I'm more of I call myself a professional shower singer um (laughs) uh, so not so much musicals as much as I love them yeah well I was going to ask you because you were in Freaky Friday Mm -hmm. if if that and I couldn't remember if your character sang or not no I was like one of the few characters that did it now I danced so I wanted to I remember talking to them and like can't because I played the uh, reporter, right, uh-huh. uh, for the yeah. wedding magazine. And you know, I was like, come on, give me do something. I dance. I can do a little two-step for you, right? And the guy was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so like, I oh, will pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we have a dream of someday there being a Hallmark musical. I, I don't understand why it hasn't been done yet. I mean, it really should happen. You know, like on Disney Channel, they have all these successful uh, musicals. There's all these successful, you know, live musicals like Hairspray. And, oh, yeah. I think it would be a huge hit. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think just with the genre that Hallmark is, musical full on should exist in that magical world. Christmas music is a natural part of Christmas. So mm-hmm. if you had a Christmas musical, it would be huge. Oh, it'd be great. And they could even sell the soundtrack. It would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got Dolly Parton to star in oh, it. It'd oh be amazing, gosh. right? I can, can see imagine? it all happening already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, actually. Yeah. There's so many Hall Stars with musical abilities. You've got like mm-hmm. Jen Lilly and Nikki Deloach and Alicia Witt. Holly Robinson Pete. She sings. Yeah. yeah so many. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so- <laughs> I can play the piano. Yeah, Patti LaBelle and Dolly Parton starring in it. Bill Abbott, if you're listening to this. Yes, please. That's awesome. Uh, So I am curious. I've never um, met anybody with your name. And I was just wondering if if, uh, there was any like backstory or or meaning behind your... uh... Rikia, my name? Yeah, there is. My mother is Kenyan from the Mm -hmm. Kikui tribe and... You're traditionally named after your parents' uh, parents, your grandparents. And so I'm loosely named after my grandmother on my dad's side, um, who went by the nickname in Jamaica, because my dad's Jamaican, Miss Birdie. So Rakia loosely translates in Swahili into She Flies High. Oh, I love that. Yeah, Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. I like that. It's a really beautiful name. Thank you. That's cool. Well, so you have done a lot of projects, but I, I think that your first role with Hallmark, according to IMDb, was the most wonderful time of the year. Is that right? Oh my gosh, that was years <laughs> I ago. Know. I was like, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one still does really well for them too. I know. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Even for us, yeah. we do these throwback posts where we'll 
especially at Christmas, mm-hmm. or we'll highlight a, an old film. And even for us, whenever we posted about it, like on Instagram or whatever, we get yeah. huge. There was, I think, the two posts we did about it were in our top nine for the whole year. Really, both of them. <laughs> yeah, wow. people love that movie. Yeah, that was such a that was uh, years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two thousand and eight. Uh huh. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you've done one. Pra- I feel like almost every year it seems like since about um, more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is really amazing. Mm-hmm, thanks. What do you like about doing the Hallmark films, and and why do you think that they are so popular? Two questions. Okay, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one, the first question: Why do I like doing them? Is that they're really lighthearted. They, I'm a Vancouver local and they shoot a lot of them here. And as a parent, it keeps me close to my kids. So that's a huge factor for me. And artistically, I get to play around a lot with the roles that I've been cast in. And I find it just so enjoyable playing comedic roles. So that's why I really enjoy doing them. And then as for why they're doing so well, a weird one because you know sometimes you watch tv shows and you're like how did this even get made you know and then certain shows are amazing and then they get canceled and you don't even know why and there's no rhyme or reason I really feel it's a magical thing when something takes off and my Mm -hmm. gut instinct is there's there was a, a niche that was missing in a time when tv was full of apocalyptic shows and movies yeah and we lost the 90s charm of romantic comedies, like where did Sandra mm-hmm. Bullock go, right? And uh, Julia Roberts, right? And people were missing that. And I think Hallmark was really smart to pick up on that and kind of go back to the old studio system where they have uh, actors that you will recognize and put them in a bunch of movies per year and really invite good-hearted, light-hearted, family fun into people's homes, which is what TV watching is, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And they've done a great job of branding that. And I almost feel like Hallmark movies are their own genre in and of themselves. They're romantic comedies, but they're Hallmark romantic comedies. Yeah. 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 I think so, too. I think that there was so long where there was very little that was made for women, particularly sort of escapist kind of fair that Mm -hmm. for for women and i mean there's hardly even any soap operas these days i mean there's just very little things that used to be kind of standard escapism for women and now hardly ever anything at theater yeah is like you were saying uh, as far as romantic comedies or you know usually the ones that are there are pretty vulgar pretty yeah you know it's not the same kind of escapism it might still be enjoyable yeah but it's 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 just different than what we'd had for a long time and then it, when you add christmas to all of that i think it it makes it even more marketable even more attractive people want that experience at christmas because it's so stressful i think so that you want to just relax and watch a christmas movie <laughs> watch a christmas movie and feel light right and yeah they've really capitalized on that i think it was a really smart move and my my parents my mom loves watching them and you know <laughs> so many people come up to me like oh my god i saw your christmas and never great <laughs> you know and and it just gives me so much joy being able to know that the projects that i'm a part of are lightening people's uh, is that a word lightning <laughs> <laughs> yeah people's lives right and they really enjoy it yeah i mean like i said especially at christmas because it's a stressful t- like it's a joyous time obviously yeah but it's also a lot of work and and stress and want to just have something on that you can just relax relax and like there's no cynicism really and yeah. there's a place for cynicism don't get me wrong sure but like as much as there's a place for that there's a place for, for sincerity too and hallmark fills that gap and so you were in just the way you are mm-hmm. with Candace Cameron Bure. Candace Cameron Bure. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> and, and that one was kind of a, I feel like a little bit of a unique one. Yeah. For, for a Hallmark movie. And I was just wondering what that experience was like to be in that. Oh, movie. that was a fun experience. I have worked with Christopher Tabori prior to that. 
on a net who was who directed it. He directed the heck out of that movie. I thought it was great. And he hired me again as a sassy woman who's a client of uh, Candace's character who's looking for a man. And she, we kind of both inspire each other because her marriage is kind of flat. And through the process of working with clients like myself, her marriage comes back, right? And, you know, it was great working with Candace. She is such a pro. She's been doing this for so mm-hmm. long that to be in her presence doing this is just, it's nice to see how, well, she's not old, so I don't really want to call her a veteran actor, but, but, but she's very, but she, she was a kid actor, right? So yeah. she, she kind of is a veteran, even though her and I are almost the same age. Right. And it's really cool to be around someone who's been doing it that long and how Mm -hmm. effortless the process is for her and it was fun shooting with her because that one I mean it's about a a marriage a married couple which is very unusual Mm -hmm. for Hallmark movies so I don't know I've always kind of admired it on that level yeah and it has some it has some humor I just enjoy it and so that's good to hear that the queen of Hallmark as we like to call her (laughs) (laughs) she really is I remember just remembering that she's such a great mom as well because she would constantly be texting her kids and her daughter and like, and not just like, have you done your homework or anything like that? Like just like a friendship. I really admired that because at the time my daughter was quite young and, you know, I'm looking at mothers who've been doing a little bit longer than me and, you know, and she's like texting her selfies with funny faces and joking about (laughs) stuff and I was like, wow, I hope I can do that with my kids, you know, and just be Uh, friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cute. I love that. Mm-hmm. So you've been in, obviously, in a number of Christmas movies. I was thinking the, uh, the Dashing Through the Snow movie mm-hmm. you were in. That was the other one with Christopher Tabori. That was a funny one. Yeah. He directed. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. And I was just curious what it's like to make these movies, you know, usually in the summer, mm-hmm. in the hot weather. <laughs> to make a Christmas movie. Oh my uh, gosh. Dashing through the snow. I remember shooting that one as, you know, the FBI agent. And so we, Christopher wanted us to look as realistic as possible without looking intimidating, which, you know, uh-huh. Homer doesn't like intimidating looking characters really, right? Uh-huh. But he's like, you know, we needed to look like, you know, they get the bulletproof vest and like you're a professional and it's Christmas. And <laughs> and all I think of like, it is like 80 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I am dying. They had, un- <laughs> and it was funny because instead of the bulletproof vest, what we ended up doing, if our jackets were closed, we had ice packs underneath us, like an ice vest. Uh, the oh, yeah. department had and so that kind of doubled as the shape of the uh the bulletproof vest underneath their jacket smart because it was so hot it was incredibly hot yeah i mean you gotta must have to work to stay hydrated oh yeah <laughs> in the least and that one we shot a lot of the um these movies we shoot them in kind of like the suburbs way out in the valley of uh, vancouver so there's not any amenities anywhere close by other than what set has. And sometimes where set is and where the food is are far apart just for what we need for the location. And that one, there was the one scene where we arrest Megan's character. That day was particularly hot. Just one of those where you're just like, I'm dying here. And everyone was dying. And there was nothing really close by because it was really far away from the circus where all this stuff was. But we got her done. Mm-hmm. Got her done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Do you ever get kind of tired of Christmas by the time things come around? Because you've been doing all these Christmas movies and just dealing with it all year? No, not really. Like when you shoot in a Christmas movie, it doesn't feel like Christmas. It's uh-huh. weird because even though like the the art department decks out these houses and locations, like it looks magical, right? Yeah. It's normally like August or September. And, right. uh, and yeah, I don't necessarily feel Christmassy. And actually my, the series, the One Winter Weekend series, that one shoots in November normally. Um, the last two did. And straight after that one's done is when I start feeling Christmassy. Because mm-hmm. then I'm like, okay, here's the list. I got to shop for these people. I got to send this to <laughs> Toronto. Like I get into Christmas mode. Then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. Because we don't want to be ruining Christmas for <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know people, who, I've heard people that do the food shows that by the time mm-hmm. it gets to Thanksgiving, they're just like, they don't want to eat turkey. They don't want to eat a turkey. Yeah. Or so. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, no, I actually quite enjoy Christmas. It's a, it's a, I'm pretty busy throughout the year and it's the yeah. one of the few times of the year that I can really bond with my family and not do anything. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So Christmas in Evergreen, you've been in all three movies. Mm-hmm. That must be a really fun, crazy experience with that cast. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's really, we're all, we all know each other quite well now. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like a family shooting that mm-hmm. that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, what's it like just being in Evergreen and the whole set and the the town and <laughs> and everything? <laughs> it's awesome. We shoot uh, Christmas in Evergreen in a historical village called Burnaby Village. It's like a, over a hundred years old. The town of Evergreen. Burnaby Village was double the town of Evergreen, I should say, uh-huh. and it's small, so. I don't know. It, it just, it feels like home, if that makes any sense. The majority of the movie is shot in there. If from one building across the street, we'll use another building for another thing. We use the back of this building for another thing. So it's really contained and it almost feels like theater. And then now that we all know each other quite well, it really feels like theater. Like it's a family shooting mm-hmm. Evergreen. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Do you ever get to ride in that truck? The red truck? Uh, I did, actually. This last movie, it was for a very short time. Uh-huh. Like we're, ta- we're talking like five feet. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the director wanted like to stop and then get out of the car. And so um, and I was like, I get, to drive the, I get to drive the truck. And he's like, yeah, you do, sure. Uh, yeah. But it wasn't. It really wasn't driving the car. I mean, they, they yeah. were, it, you know, it was a bunch of guys actually pushing the vehicle from behind in neutral. Oh, okay. And then I press on the brakes and pull up on the emergency brake. And, <laughs> uh, and then I get out. And I'm like, <laughs> you are call it driving. Yeah. <laughs> But I loved this last one. I thought, I wished that, honestly, as much as I love Paul Green, yeah. I wished that that your plotline had been the main plotline because I thought it was, oh, it was my favorite. Thank you. And Thank I, you. I just thought that you and Antoni had such nice chemistry. Oh, thanks. And because I'd seen him in Daro and Daro and a few other things. Mm-hmm. So I was excited to see him get a bigger role and I just thought the two of you worked really well together and I I would love to see you guys do more together thank you I really want to work with him again that was the first time I met him I hadn't even heard about him Mm -hmm. and uh, he got cast I was like oh okay and we realized we have so much in common right down to the fact that he's from Toronto as well. We went to the mm-hmm. same theater school. Like I'm one or two years ahead of him. So I graduated just as he was coming into theater school. Mm-hmm. Same theater school. Like random stuff. Like his son is Xavier. My husband is Xavier as well. I mean, the list, it, we, are, we live very close to each other. We're talking like a five minute drive or a 20 minute walk away from each other. Wow. And like, there was so much, we, we, ha- we have friends in common. He was texting like this girl I went to high school with. And I was just like, oh my God, Janine. <laughs> there was so much we had in common. Yeah. And both of us were kind of like, how did we not meet right. prior to this? Yeah. That's you know? Funny. Well, I mean, it just shows because it, you could feel the chemistry. It, it just worked. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like, even right down to like our parents met. His dad, who passed away, uh, was one of the creators of Caravana in Toronto. My mom mm-hmm. opened Toronto's first African art store. And like my dad was here watching the kids while we were shooting that movie. And I was telling him, I met this guy. And we have so much in common. It's weird. Like, I don't understand yeah. our past. And he's like, oh, who is he? And, I was, and you know, it's like, it's uh, Antonio <laughs> Kion. He's like, Kion. I know that name, Kion. Is that the guy from Caravana? <laughs> Oh yeah, he used to pop by the store and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, right? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> like, so funny. Oh my gosh. Small world. Yeah, next thing it's gonna be like, and he's your long lost brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. It was really it was really good. Yeah, and so Let's definitely talk about One Winter Weekend series because mm. I love both those movies. Thank you. They were both in my top 10 non-Christmas Hallmark in their respective years. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole, like the first one, 
the whole we're stuck in the same house kind of dynamic is a story that they have done a lot on yeah. Hallmark. And uh-huh. sometimes it can be a lot of complaining, you know what I mean? And yeah. so it's not as pleasant, but yeah. I, I just thought that you guys really pulled it off. We really enjoyed that first one. And I don't know, just the, the four of you together really had great chemistry where there was you and Taylor had chemistry as friends and Duchesne? Duchesne. Duchesne. Yeah. And you are so good together. And I really liked how we got two solid romances in that instead of just one, which was as our normal for Hallmark. And I don't know, I just, that first movie, where did you shoot it? Is that a Whistler? Or? No, in Winnipeg. I thought it oh. was so, yeah, I know. And if you know Winnipeg, Canada, it's the prairies. It's flat. It's flat forever. They say, if your dog runs away, don't worry, you'll see him. Because it's so <laughs> flat. Um, <laughs> right? And I remember when I booked it, I was like, so we're shooting a movie about snowboarding in the flattest place in North America. Great. Uh-huh. How is this going to be done? Right. And they yeah. were actually really smart about it. So we shot it, majority of it in Winnipeg, all like the interior scenes, any of the chalet scenes, any of the, you know, I'm on the mountain, but I'm just walking around with my board. That was all shot in Winnipeg. And then any of the slopes scene for that first movie, we went to Calgary. So we were in Calgary for two days and they were really close to Banff and we shot on the slopes there. And Mm -hmm. that was a magical experience. The crew was whittled down to a really tiny, tiny crew, just one camera, like just the essentials. And we didn't take any breaks at all because we shot with all natural light. No movie lights were a part of it. It was all just sunlight or whatever we got. And we got her done over two days there. And then the second movie... We didn't go to Calgary. We were in Alberta, but we actually went to Banff, which was, which was even uh-huh. better. Banff is stunning. I highly recommend everyone go to Banff at least once in your life. I don't think I've ever even heard of that one. So that's a resort, a ski resort? It's a ski resort and it is beautiful. It's like the top, I guess, of the Rocky Mountains in the Canada portion of it. And it was stunning. It was, I'll correct that. It was stunning the first day. The sun was out. It was freezing cold. And then the second day, there was a blizzard, which became really hard to shoot. They had planned to shoot stuff at the top of the mountain. You get this beautiful panoramic scene of snow-tipped mountains and stuff. And we couldn't do that because the winds were just too strong there. You, the, oh. They closed the chairlifts. Yeah. So uh, Gary, uh, our director, Gary Yates, he had to rejig a lot of that stuff to make it work. Mm-hmm. in a safe place so that you know we wouldn't all yeah. blow off the mountain yeah so, <laughs> um, so, so yeah what do you think made that first movie work so well I know exactly why that movie works so well and I've actually talked to Bill about this and Michelle about this uh-huh. and I was like it's not a romance film it's mm-hmm. a buddy film yeah that's the difference Mm -hmm. And I think the expectation with Hallmark movies is the romance. And there's always going to be romance. But to feel friendship Mm -hmm. is a different kind of love, almost a pure kind of love. Mm -hmm. And and that's what the movie had, I felt. It was a buddy film. Yeah. And I felt it was actually more so of a buddy film between uh, Taylor's character and my character, not necessarily hers and her love interest or mine Mm -hmm. and my love interest. It was more so these two girlfriends who are going to get together and do this thing. And whoops, these two guys come into the party unexpectedly. It was more about that. Yeah. You know, and how, and Mm -hmm. because then that's always a threat of not a, you know, a bad threat, but like when you introduce a guy into the friendship, what does that do to the friendship? Mm -hmm. Right. So that stakes is always living there. Well, and especially because both of you were kind of workaholics too. Mm-hmm. And so that dynamic, I think, is, is something that a lot of people can really relate to of mm-hmm. figuring out how to try to sort of maybe a little bit balance work <laughs> with, uh, you know, your friendships and your other things in life. And yeah, uh, it's it's hard. Yeah. I mean, that's a common uh, hallmark theme, you know, and um and normally it comes in the face of choosing French, uh, choosing work or love, right? Yeah. But we never think about that when it comes to our friends, right? Yeah. 
Exactly. And I think that's where the stakes of, are the, is a friendship going to actually happen? Is what I feel the, the movie was more so about, even though you, like, you know it's going to happen, but it's like, as you said, these two women are workaholics and are they actually going to get away and are they actually going to have fun? Are they actually going to go after their dreams? And it's, it's how they, the girls support each other and mm-hmm. love comes into the picture just by chance. Yeah. Now the second one, it's tricky because Hallmark sequels usually aren't my favorite. Mm-hmm. So, and, and especially when I read in the summary, I'm like, <laughs> Sean and Megan have lost touch. Oh no, this is <laughs> terrible. How can that happen? I was very upset. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, especially the proposal scene was oh, so epic. I mean, so come sweet. On. Taylor so laid good. it down. <laughs> yes, she did. Oh, yes, she did. My only nitpick with that movie was yeah. I was irritated that they didn't give you and Sean a kiss. A kiss? Oh gosh, <sighs> you know, okay, that's not that's not Hallmark's fault. There was a kiss written. Um, I'll tell you a little BTS stuff, man. Yes. Okay. I was sick as a dog after the first week of shooting. We shot that film in three weeks. The first uh-huh. week was fine. And by the end of the week, I was sick. I have never been so sick in my life. We were in oh, the middle. No. We were in the middle of shooting a scene and I left to go to the green room and fall asleep. It's the most unprofessional thing to do, but I was so weak. I started crying. Taylor's oh. like, are you okay? And I was just like, I want to go home. And I left the set and I went to the green room and I stopped production and, you know, producer, director, everyone's coming in. Like, are you okay, Ricky? And I'm like, no. And I started throwing up. I had a fever and it was tough because it was our last day at one of the locations. And oh, it's so bad. The day before I was in one scene and I'd finished early. And then the next day I was top to bottom and that was our last day. And so I, we had to get the day. And so they were very kind to work with me. They just, I went in and shot only my side and then they had a stand in doing the rest of my lines for Taylor's coverage and any of the other actors talking to my character because I couldn't get up. Wow. As soon as they shouted, cut, I would go to a chair and sleep and I wouldn't remember what I had just done. Oh my gosh. And the whole time my voice was like this. Like I had to voice over a lot of that movie um, just because I was so sick. Oh. The next day, uh, they were very smart how they did this. They rewrote some of the scenes. So I only had to shoot one scene. And then I went home and I had a weekend and I got a little bit better to the point where I could actually function properly, right? Uh-huh. Um, and then we had the weekend. And then by the Monday when we were starting to shoot again, I was functional, but still sick. And I remained sick for the next two weeks. I was getting better. Wow. Yeah. And I was so worried. I was like, we're not going to get the kiss. We're not going to get the kiss. And of course we didn't get the kiss. Because, I mean, I would never want to put this cold into, like, it's absolutely wrong to do that. So that's why the kiss never happened. It was supposed to happen in the infirmary <laughs> scene when we yeah. profess our love to each other. And then we get the almost kiss. And I was like, oh, why am I sick? The audience is going to hate this. Um <laughs> But I we I, did kind of hate it. We were like, "What?" Of course you did. I hated it. I everyone hated it. Damn it! It was my cold, and the okay. one thing I would, the only thing I would hate more is if I got Duchesne sick, right? And <laughs> yeah. so I was like, "I'm sorry, but like human life is very important. <laughs> Unfortunately, more than this story. So I'm sorry, it's not happening. All right, all right. I can't get Dewey. I can't get Dewey sick." Yeah. Well, okay, we'll allow it then. Now I, I feel much better <laughs> about that's it. That's why, that's the story. I remember like I was live <laughs> tweeting with it and I was just like, oh my God, I, we're going to get to the infirmary suite and see everyone's expecting it. I know it, I know it, I know it. And boom, it blew up. And it was like, hashtag no kiss, WTF. <laughs> <laughs> and like, 
and like my phone blew up and I was like, I'm just going to put this down. <laughs> Ride the wave. Well, see, now you've helped because normally I'm actually not a huge fan of the near kisses at Hallmark. Like sometimes yeah. it can be done well, but most yeah. of the time I'm just like, come on, these are grown ups. They can kiss. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but now I'll just be like, okay, maybe they're sick. That's, it, that's yeah, saying. yeah, exactly. There's probably a bigger reason behind it all. Like I have never been so sick in my life. Oh. I have never shot during being sick, like, and uh-huh. certainly not sick to that point where I actually yeah. stopped production and they oh have to figure gosh. out how they're going to shoot. I, it's so unprofessional to do that. It's so not me. I hate actors who are like, can you just get the stand in to do my lines for me? I hate that. And I became that person because I couldn't get up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can only, your body can only do so much. And I'm so. not replaceable. That's the yeah. problem. I can't yeah. be like, sorry, That's I'm right. feeling it sick. So you have a new film that is coming out for Winterfest this week. Yes. Uh, that when this airs and it's Hearts of Winter. Mm-hmm. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about that and your role in that film? Yeah. Okay. So Hearts of Winter is a story about a woman, an interior designer, who is also playing kind of like the social media game in uh, building her business. So she comes mm-hmm. up with a contest where, you know, you can get a home makeover and we'll follow the whole process on social media. Enter in the winner, who is a widow and, uh, and a single dad. <laughs> and uh, unbeknownst to him, his daughter is the one that entered the competition and mm-hmm. they won. So now he's stuck and forced to deal and reconcile the loss of his wife through this woman mm-hmm. who is like, I'm just going to make over your house. And it's an interesting movie because in my opinion, it's less of a comedy mm-hmm. and more of a drama, mm-hmm. but the comedy kind of comes in a kind of dark way because, mm-hmm. you know, she's like, we're going to get rid of this couch and get you a new area rug and what's going on here. And he's like, why? That was my wife's favorite area rug, and that was oh yeah, right. <laughs> like, you know, and and so the whole movie, it's really good dynamic uh, where you're, you know, our characters are kind of walking on eggshells until he lightens up and accepts mm-hmm. the process of renewal. So my character is playing the assistant and associate, um, an assistant to a uh, Joe Wagner's character okay. in the interior design in her interior design company. Okay. And so I am following this whole process and I'm kind of the little wizard behind, in Oz who is helping to blow up the social media and kind of use the chemistry that they have together to mm-hmm. drive viewers to our website. And I kind of pro- poke the fire mm-hmm. and let it burn a little brighter for them. You know, well, I'm, I'm really excited about it because Jill Wagner and Victor Webster have worked together before mm-hmm. in Harvest Wedding, and that was a real good one. So mm-hmm. I, I just assume they'll have good chemistry and this will be a good one. They do. They do. Yeah. And I've worked with Jill and Christmas and Evergreen. So, oh, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. So we had real fun together on this one because uh, Christmas and Evergreen part two, a lot of our scenes weren't together unless it was an ensemble scene. So uh-huh. I was so excited to find out that she was starring in it when they called me with the part. Um, Cause like, I'll finally get actual scenes with Jill, just her and yeah. I, and we just riffed off of each other. We improv a lot. It was really, really nice creatively working with yeah. that woman. She's so... She's the best. We've had her on our podcast twice. She is awesome. Yeah, she's so funny yeah, and, I love her. and great. She's homegirl, so. she's homegirl for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, great. Well, we're really excited for that. Winterfest movies are always fun. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's our little, you survived countdown to Christmas. Here's your That's little present. That's what I call it. I call it the party after the party. That's yeah, what I call yeah, yeah. it, you know? <laughs> well, so we have some fun questions okay. we like to end off the, uh, the interview with. Mm-hmm. So real quick. Yeah. First question, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, oh, um, salted caramel. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite color? I don't really have one. I like them all. <laughs> Very good. Okay, good. Um, okay. What music are you into right now? Uh, oh, well, I mean, I just had Pearl Jam rock in my house this morning. So <laughs> I'm into that right now, I guess. 
Okay, good. Got a little good Pearl Jam. Yeah. Um, what is your go-to date night food? Pasta. It's so mm. <laughs> I love pasta. Yeah. I can eat it every day, all day. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, what is your go-to date night activity? To go, if, if you go out on the town, do something fun. Oh, yeah. That's normally dinner, drinks, a movie, and dancing. Oh, wow. I go hard. <laughs> Big night. <laughs> Big night. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. Okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, beaches or mountains? Ooh. Uh, mm, I'm gonna have to say mountains now after my recent trip to Africa (laughs) oh wow yeah yeah Yeah. that's cool Mm. uh did you get to uh, see like lions and stuff like that yeah uh and I literally just got back about two days ago oh my gosh so about four days ago I was in the middle of the Ngorogoro crater in Tanzania and it was like the Garden of Eden. You look everywhere and there was life everywhere. There is wow. zebras and buffalo and rhinos and elephants and lions and flamingos. Oh, what? does that scary at all? Or No, I cried. No. I was like, oh my God, there is a God. <laughs> and like, you're just looking at all this beauty all around you. Yeah, yeah. and it was so high, like you're in the mountains. And then, so I have to say I'm a mountain girl right now. That's amazing. Very cool. Would you rather be in a fancy dress or in sweats? Sweats. <laughs> <okay>. Sweats. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> in sweats. <laughs> right now. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Mm, oh, mm, mm, that's a good question. Ah. I mean, I love Christmas, but I also love Thanksgiving too. I, yeah, anything that has to do with a lot of food, um, that's my favorite <laughs> yeah, holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, a last question, and you can pick one of your own. Okay, what is your favorite Hallmark movie? Oh, um. <laughs> Hearts of Winter. <laughs> yeah, oh, very good answer. <laughs> Check it out. Coming up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, this has been so much fun. You've been really great to talk Thank with. Thank you. And you hopefully we can have you on again sometime because this was really a lot of fun. And do you have social media that you'd like to share? Sure. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram. Um, and I'm posting a lot of my uh, trip on there right now. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. At rakia.bernard on Insta. And I am Rakia Bernard on Twitter. And I'm not really much on Facebook. I mean, I just upload my Instagram. It goes straight to my Facebook. But you can follow me on, on my fan page there. It's under my name, Rakia Bernard. It's up. Great. Okay. We'll have all that in the description section so people can make sure to follow Rakia. And thanks again. And uh, we'll have a very great premiere. Thank you. Coming up this weekend. Yes. So thanks again. And we'll talk to you soon. Talk soon. <laughs> thanks. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. We'd like to thank Rakia for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to talk with her. She was really great. Make sure you're following her content and uh, we'll look forward to the movie coming up and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So make sure to check that out. We have lots of Oscar coverage. Everything's coming up. Make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast and all of our social media and on iTunes and YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. That really helps us out. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel we are so grateful for that we have our patron group that's a lot of fun with exclusives and giveaways so we'd love for you to check that out there's information in the description section and then we also have our merch store which has i survived countdown to christmas shirts uh designs that you should definitely take a look at Uh, and so thanks so much rakia and let us know what you think of all the different things we talked about and we'll talk to you all later bye